Okay, this is an explanation of how locking pieces function and how they correlate to the configuration of a given roller locked firearm, okay? So your standard high impulse locking piece looks like that, that's a high. This is a low impulse locking piece. This is 100 degree and this is 110 degree, okay? Now, these different configurations are for different pressures that you're gonna operate the gun at, and it directly correlates to whether or not it's gonna be suppressed and, what, and how long the barrel is, okay? Now, if you look at this guy, this is a 110 degree locking piece here. You notice it's got a really steep slope, okay? Versus this 100 degree locking piece, all right? So you can get those lined up. Now, the deal that I can find with these is, so with your, this is a 90, that's your low. I think your, your high is an 85, okay? Now, the idea here is with your different locking pieces, it's, it correlates to the amount of barrel that you have, okay? So SDs have a super short barrel and it's ported, all right? And this angle and the profile of that locking wedge controls how long your rollers are engaged in your trunnion, okay? So this is a high impulse, all right? You have all this time before the rollers squeeze in and unlock, okay? So you've got that big long delay for the pressure to drop and so when the bolt finally unlocks, it unlocks with a lower velocity. So you would use this in a configuration where you have a suppressed gun, okay, with a full length barrel, you're getting a lot of pressure into the system and therefore you need as much delay as you can manage, okay? This is a standard 40 cal bolt head, 40 cal 10 millimeter, okay? You're low, Let's say you're running some lower pressure rounds, some, some you know, 160 grain reloads, and this, this is in a 10 mil, but in a nine mil, you can apply the same logic. You know, in a nine mil, it'd be like your 115 grain Wolf, whatever, light duty ammunition, okay? Now, your K, these are both standard barrel lengths, right? Your 8.886 or whatever it comes into, okay? Your K has, a K length barrel, so it's like a four inch barrel, right? And this thing, if you look at the amount of delay you have in the unlocking of these rollers, if you imagine my fingers are the trunnion, you don't have that much distance for this thing to travel, for it to unlock, extract, and you know, unlock from the trunnion and send the bolt rearward, okay? So if you look at that amount of time that it takes for it to unlock versus your high impulse, you've got this huge amount of time that it takes as it's rolling down this slope, okay? So that slope right there controls the amount of time that the, the rollers are locked in the trunnion, okay? So if you're experiencing excessive bolt velocities, if you're experiencing roller dents, if you've got hypercycling, your you know ejection issues, stuff like that, but you know it's because you're running it suppressed, you're running it with high pressure ammunition, you want a high impulse, high, basically a long delay locking wedge, okay? Now, you get to your SD, and this thing, it almost, it, there's almost no unlocking that takes place, right? It's a very steep angle, relatively speaking, right, if you look at this here, and therefore, it unlocks very readily. You don't have that much distance that has traveled when you look at the, in a relative sense before these things unlock completely from the trunnion and they're allowed to extract. The reason being, even though it's suppressed, it doesn't really matter once the pressure drops to zero, okay? So as soon as you pass a port or you pass a vent or the, the, the projectile leaves the chamber, you, you've got to have You've, basically, it needs to be well underway in unlocking and extracting the cartridge from the chamber. This is some mysticism that 
I, I understood it, but I didn't quite understand it until I ran into a problem with a, a reverse stretch 10 millimeter that I'm putting together. And then I, I finally started thinking about it. And, and you know, this is a question that we're looking at with 51 Bravos and 51K Bravos, but I always figured that a suppressor would make a difference. But looking at the SD and the SD having a steeper angle than the K, well, you would think because the SD suppressed that you've got some residual energy built up in the suppressor that would help the thing in unlocking. But when it comes to unlocking and sending the bolt rearward, it doesn't matter because the barrel's ported. So you have to run a very steep angle locking piece when you have a short barrel or a short ported barrel, right? And such is the case with your K, right? So this has got a K indicator, this has got an SD indicator, and then you've got your low and your high, okay? So when it boils down to it, when you're looking at how your gun's running and you're dealing with stuff where it's, it's, not, it's running too much, too fast, you need more of a delay in the opening of your breech, right? If you're running lighter ammunition, the, the impulse means, the higher the low impulse means how much impulse you expect to get from the cartridge, right? If you're running lighter duty ammunition, you go with a low impulse for lightweight ammunition. If you're running a short barrel, you would go with a K, right? And if you're running suppress or you're running an SD specifically, you run the steepest angle you can get such that it basically can't help but unlock itself. So I hope that was useful. This is one of those things that I, like I said, I understood it intrinsically, but I didn't really get it. And now I do. So there you go.